Chris Matthews is basically the Sean Hannity of MSNBC. And I say this because he's genuinely stupid and he doesn't do real political analysis. He virtue signals, grandstands, and he just sucks up to power. And I say this especially after seeing one of his post-debate hot takes where he gives Democrats and Bernie Sanders the worst advice ever. Because you know how basically being socially liberal is the only real reason to vote for these economically conservative Democrats? Well, what he's saying is that social liberalism, that tenuous advocacy for social justice issues, abandon that and be more socially conservative as well and pander to people who are maybe a little bit more pro-life, a little bit more homophobic maybe. This is literally what he is going to suggest. And on top of that, he's going to tell Bernie Sanders that he shouldn't actually talk about one of the most pressing issues, one of the most um, huge concerns that voters have in this country. Take a look. This is uh, one of the worst analyses, if you could even call it that, that I've seen. Well, I think there's a couple of things that strike me and they're, they're anecdotal, but uh, when Lieutenant Colonel Vindman was telling the story of his life the other day in the hearing, and he talked about America as a country where uh, right matters. And I, and I thought that kind of uh, immigrant patriotism is something that really doesn't have much to do with left versus right. It's sort of a, a feeling about the country. You may want to make radical change in this country, like Woody Guthrie, this land is our land, or, or Kate Smith and God bless America, but there has to be sort of a, a, a piece there about America and your, and your affection for the country you start with and then you work from that to fix it. And I think when I look at some of the issues about choice or issues, issues like same-sex marriage and all, I think the Democrats always miss the, the cultural piece. They, they I mean, right on the economics. But they miss the cultural piece the, the, and how you, people feel about things. I mean, I can be, I've been pro-choice since Roe v. Wade was, in, was a court decision, but I have a different view about abortion than other people do. I think Pelosi does too. I think Pennsylvania is pro-life in a, in a way that's pretty real. And I think it was one of the reasons why Trump went up there. Now, Trump is a Montebank. He's a charlatan. But he plays on these cultural issues, make America great again. They're honest feelings, but he exploits them and, and distorts them in his purposes. I think affection and patriotic feeling about the country and feeling about life and choice and traditional values, if you will. The Democrats are very cold about those things. And I think they really miss a chance to win by simply identifying with the feelings of the country better than they do. And that's the only thought I have tonight. And I caught it again tonight with Bernie Sanders saying, the country's corrupt, our system's corrupt. Be careful about that language, Bernie. You know, be careful that our system of politics is corrupt. That's too strong. I'm sorry, it has corrupt aspects. But to say our democracy is corrupt is a bad starting point with a lot of people's hearts about this country. That's what I think. That isn't what voters want, Chris. That's what you want. Because if Democrats actually listened to you and took your advice, they would be far worse off than they are now. And it's just, it's, it's mind-boggling to me that this fool gets paid a $5 million per year salary and he does zero research. He doesn't know what he's talking about, seemingly. And his show is called Hardball when all he does is throw softball questions to people in power. I mean, this is why people don't take corporate media seriously. But let's get to some of the specifics here. He thinks that Democrats should be more patriotic, whatever that means. Um, and he says, I think when I look to some of the issues like choice and same-sex marriage and all, I think Democrats always miss the cultural piece. They're right on economics, but they miss the cultural piece and how they feel about things. Now, that was word salad. But what he's saying here is completely idiotic. It's always usually Democrats who win the culture wars and it's Republicans who are lagging behind. But he wants them to not miss the mark on things like abortion and same-sex marriage. First of all, it's 2019. Marriage equality was legalized in 2015. Are you advocating that they rehash this issue in order to pander to evangelicals? Like, I, like I don't know what this looks like in practice, but if I had to guess, this strategy would be 
a massive failure. And on top of that, he says Democrats are very cold about traditional values and whatnot. And quote, I think they really missed a chance to win by simply identifying with the feelings of the country. In other words, abandon your base even more and shift further to the right. Can you imagine? The one draw, the one reason people come out to vote for Democrats is largely due to harm reduction because socially speaking, they're not going to take away civil rights like Republicans will. But what he's saying basically is uh, you're missing the mark and uh, you are already economically conservative. That's great. But do better when it comes to traditional values. Chris, just register as a Republican. I mean, I don't know what the end goal is for him. If they shift further to the right, they abandon even a larger portion of their base. You do know that they were wiped out under Obama because they were too conservative, right? And people don't come out to vote because they don't perceive there to be a real difference between Democrats and Republicans. So if you actually see this in practice, Democrats would be non-existent. We just have one big party, and it's already one big party in D.C. that just looks out for special interests and elites and oligarchs. But if you take away that advocacy for, you know, social justice issues... There's zero difference between Democrats and Republicans. It's just one big Republican party in D.C. I mean, this is this is obviously the worst advice ever. Ever. <laughs> he also randomly brings up Bernie Sanders and says that uh, Bernie Sanders shouldn't say that the country and system is corrupt. Be careful with that language, Bernie. Be careful. That's too strong. It has corrupt aspects but to say that our democracy is corrupt is a bad starting point with a lot of people's hearts about this country. Again, it is absolutely absurd that he gets paid $5 million per year to say things that he knows nothing about. He is incredibly uninformed because that is not where the American people are at. A Gallup poll found that 75% of Americans believed corruption was widespread. This is from 2015, but nonetheless, the findings show that he's wrong and the American people align with Bernie on this issue. And on top of that, even if it was politically incorrect to point that out, to call out the corruption, a 2014 Princeton University study found that we basically live in an oligarchy, effectively, right? When you look at policy outcomes, normal citizens have a statistically insignificant impact on policy outcomes, whereas elites and special interests they dictate all policy outcomes. That's due to corruption. Campaign contributions, legalized bribes, that's the result of corruption. So to say, uh, don't talk about corruption because you're offending people who are patriotic. You have no clue what you're talking about. And criticizing America is the highest form of patriotism. So shut the fuck up, you shill. See, this really is what manufacturing consent looks like. He is trying to get you to not question the corruption that is rampant in D.C. Don't question the Democratic Party being complicit in this corruption. Just don't even question anything. Just accept the system and love the country and shut the fuck up, peasant, because I'm making $5 million per year and I don't want you dipshits to ruin that for me. Just, just <laughs> pull the mask off and say it. Just say that you love the status quo and you love capitalism because the system is serving you really well. The establishment is serving you very well. Just admit it, dipshit. Now, on top of that, um, another clip that I want to play from his post-debate uh, analysis, analysis, I use that word loosely, is uh, he decided to shit on Bernie Sanders more and talked about a strategy that would basically guarantee another loss in 2020 if they took his advice. And he's doing all of this, mind you, while talking to Amy Klobuchar, who's pulling at 1.5%, and he's going to proceed to, you know, give her credit for having the correct strategy not Bernie, <laughs> someone who's actually a front runner, but it's the 1.5 percenter who has the correct strategy. Listen. I, I noticed something tonight that is growing within each debate, with yes. each debate. It is a real San Andreas fault in the Democratic Party today. You can talk about it, you all don't like Trump, you don't want to get rid of it, but Bernie won't even agree with that. His first chance tonight, and he basically said, this isn't about getting rid of Trump. This is about my big social democratic revolution I want to start. Going through the same old litany of numbers. He doesn't accept your argument that you have to appeal to moderates. You got to get some moderates, center to left Democrats, some centrists, and some Republicans. Yeah. And then you and Buttigieg and the vice president, the former president, all argued you have to go for a larger audience than just the, the hard left. Exactly. He doesn't accept that. 
And Elizabeth Warren damn well doesn't accept it either. That's the fight, isn't it? We just tried this strategy in 2016. Donald Trump is the president. That's how effective your strategy is. Appealing to moderates and Republicans is not going to be conducive to victory. And for every moderate you win over by being Republican light, you're going to end up losing 10 more left wingers. Because as you shift to the right, you abandon your base. And then those people just stay home. So the strategy is to go after non-voters and people who haven't been participating in the process, people who are voting for the Green Party. Go after them. Go after the left because you can't win without your base. And I shouldn't have to explain this in 2019 after we just tried the strategy with Hillary Clinton. Like, I shouldn't have to explain this. It should be common knowledge. They should have learned their lesson. But guess what? They're never going to learn their lesson. And even if Let's say, hypothetically speaking, worst case scenario, Joe Biden is the nominee and he runs to the center in the general election and loses. In 2024, we'll be having the same conversation. And people like Chris Matthews will be saying, well, the party's shifting too far to the left. We need to hold the center. It doesn't matter how many times this strategy loses. Chris Matthews is comfortable, so he doesn't actually have to care about winning. He just wants the candidates to talk about policy in a way that makes him feel comfortable that you know speaks to his patriotic core okay well if they take your advice chris they're going to be worse off than they already are so what he should do if he truly cared about democrats winning is resign and stop spewing propaganda because if they actually take your advice trump gets a second term so if you truly care about defeating trump which he says he does then uh quit stop doing propaganda because you clearly don't know what you're talking about and you are offering democrats the worst possible advice just quit